prolonged fever. Is that right? Okay. Go ahead, Dr. Srila. Good afternoon, one and all. This is regarding Vishnu Priya, who is an 11-year-old female, hailing from Chittur district, informant being mother. Information is reliable. She was brought with history of rash and fever since 4 months, joint pain since 3 months, and neck swelling since 1 month. She was apparently well, happy school-going um, girl till 4 months back. Later, um, insidiously, rash started over the malar aspect as initially macular rash, later coalescing to form a patch over both the malar aspect of the face, which gradually progressed over the neck, um, arms, and over the chest and then the abdomen. And the gradually progressive rash was uh, papular squamous, multiple uh, multiple lesions were there with no well-defined margins. No. On, sorry, on history, I don't think you can say papular squamous or what type it is. Uh, how did you elicit that history? The history is just about a rash which started in the face and uh, which part of the face? Malar, you said. That means the cheeks. Yes. Is the bridge of the nose involved or uh, perioral area involved? Um, well, which part of the face is involved? The nasal what, what was the uh, spread? What was the extension and the spread mm. of the rash? The nasal labial folds were spared, sir. Okay. Why, why are you mentioning nasal labial folds? How is it important? Um, because in uh, hello, because in dermatomyositis there is involvement of these nasal labial folds. Yes. So dermatomyositis uh, nasal labial fold is involved, whereas in SLE there is a sparing of nasal labial uh, fold. And what about is there any significance of perioral area sparing of perioral region? What does it signify? In lot of conditions like scarlet fever uh, and uh, such conditions, even uh, dermatomyositis, perioral region is bad. Okay, for some uh, unexplained reason. Okay, I think the description of the rash as a macular, papular, and all that from the history is uh, difficult. I, I don't know even how good the history is from this mother, but uh, even a very intelligent mother would be difficult to elicit that history. Okay, carry on. It initially told it was dotted, sir, okay. and then it formed a patch. Okay. This rash was non-itchy, not associated with any pain, non-tender, and it was occasionally associated with uh, burning sensation when she used to go out and for school. Okay. This rash is associated with uh, fever joint pains and oral ulcerations which I would um, describe further sir. There is no history of any drug intake prior to this rash. No history of any headache, myalgia, muscle weakness or uh, gait abnormality, visual disturbance okay. and uh, foreign body sensation of the eyes, na any nail abnormalities, no throat pain, no uh, breathlessness palpitations, no, uh, not associated with any abnormal movements. So what you described is the systemic manifestations of a connective tissue disorder like thing. How did you come to arrive at the conclusion this is a connective tissue disorder from the history? Uh, um, any child with a rash, it could be infectious, it could be malignancy, it could be connective tissue. Was there any pointers yes. from the history to lead you on to this type of history? Case? This rash had a waxing and a waning course. Sir. Whenever okay. it comes, it uh, stays for about 10 days. Okay. It fades, but it is present, but it fades, sir. Okay. Fades off. One and more it, thing you mentioned, it increases on going to school. What does it mean? For photosensitivity. Photosensitivity. So, hmm. what does it indicate? Photosensitive rash. Um, it is present in um, connective tissue disease. Deficiency, riboflavin deficiency, okay. Inflammatory bowel disease. Inflammatory bowel disease, especially when there is loss of weight. You said the child is easy fatigability and loss of weight recently. One has to think about inflammatory bowel disease like Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. Although these are rare, okay. What are the common or more commoner things? Okay. Oral thrush associated with the HIV infection or a chronic chronic immunosuppressed uh, child, okay. 
any other thing. What about celiac disease? Has anybody mentioned about celiac disease? Celiac disease with oral ulcers and weight loss. Although fever is not explained. Okay. Other connective tissue things like uh, Bechet's syndrome. Bechet's, Bechet's, yeah, Bechet's. Um, all have to be thought about. Okay. When you have oral ulcers or for that matter ulcers in the oral cavity, there are five groups of etiological factors. Less or pain, pain, painful, sir. Painful. I think I first you said I rashless. okay. Sorry, rash was painless. Sorry. If it is painful and painless, does it have any significance? There are two children, one who has an oral ulcer which is painful, another who has an oral ulcer that is not painful. Does it make a difference to you? Yes. Anybody in the audience? No, is it? Is it really rash painful or painless? Painless. Yes, sir. Painless. See, you must remember the most common oral ulcer is an aptus ulcer and this is and it is exquisitely painful. One must have an aptus ulcer to know the pain of it. It is ex very, very painful. Right? And in fact it will be so painful that the intake will be affected. And all other oral lesions due to infections, for example, the commonest oral lesion which produces a painful ulcer today in OPD practices, can anybody tell me what is the commonest? Herpangina. The mother will give only a history saying that there is fever and the child is having throat infection and drooling. The child won't swallow. And you, unless you see the soft palate where you will get ulcers, it will be missed. That's one. Second thing is, if you have an oral ulcer, you must always ask whether the oral ulcers are persistent or whether they are appearing, reappearing and disappearing. What is the significance, Srilata? Oral ulcers which are persistent, oral ulcers which come and go, what is the difference between the two? Syndrome, sir, are there? No, no, you have again, I am giving you a case scenario where there are two children. One has persistent oral ulcers for so three, four months, and another gets oral ulcers periodically. If it is persistent, then it is because of immunodeficiency, primary or secondary immunodeficiency syndrome, sir. If it is on and off, uh, many anybody in the audience? It is persistent, we will think of uh, malignancy or uh, vasculitis. See, basically malignant oral ulcers in pediatrics are very uncommon. Very uncommon. Remember, if a child has a persistent oral ulcer, which is not responding to topical therapy alone, it indicates a serious underlying inflammatory disorder. On the other hand, if a child has got an aptus ulcer, which I, I give you a case in every, every 28 days, mouth ulcers come, fever comes. What's the first diagnosis? Huh? Every 28 days there is fever and mouth ulcer. Cyclic neutropenia. Cyclic neutropenia. Periodic. That's a characteristic condition. Because the other, other condition which causes mouth ulcer and Recurrent tonsillitis. Every four to eight weeks, fever, tonsillitis, mouth ulcer. You, 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 periodic fever, aptus stomatitis. Periodic syndrome. fever syndrome. What is the other name periodic for it? What is the other name for it? Huh? PFAPA syndrome, isn't it? Right? Right? That, that also brought you get aptus ulcers, tonsillitis periodically. On the other hand, if you have a child with SLE or for that matter, if you have a child with inflammatory bowel disease, unless the disease activity is suppressed with therapy, the ulcers are likely to 
persist, they won't disappear spontaneously. It's very unusual for a child who has got a chronic inflammatory disorder to have natural remission. Unusual, it can occur, but by and large it doesn't occur. Right? Because of this abscess ulcer, she is not able to take uh, orally. Poor or it's associated with poor oral intake. I am interested in knowing from you. You said there is increased fatigue in the child. Yes. What are the conditions in which a child comes to you with increased fatigue? Uh, cardiac, uh, cardiology. What is the commonest cause for anemia. increased fatigability in a child? Anemia, sir. Okay. Ravi Kumar is sitting close by me. Fatigue does not losing weight. Losing weight, fatigue. Uh, diabetes. Becoming dark. Yeah, I know. I'm giving you enough clues to Ravi around. Dark pigmentation, creases. Adrenal. Addisons, addisons, addisons. In fact, but it is, uh, you must remember, in fact, there have been reports in literature where children receive inhaled corticosteroids. The only symptom of uh, adrenal suppression may be increased fatigability. You, their uh, pituitary adrenal axis may well be subclinically depressed and that may be the earliest symptom. Right? What are the other causes? Of increased fatigability. <laughs> any chronic illness, right? Any chronic systemic disease, right? Anything else? Somebody what is the commonest cause of increased fatigability in an adolescent? Adolescent. That too during March and April. Heat. Stroke. Huh? Stress, yeah. Emotional stress. Perhaps the most common cause. Right? Most common cause. Anything else? Have you heard of chronic fatigue syndrome? Is it there in pediatrics or not there? Yeah. Yeah. And what are the etiological agents that have been attributed to, that are, that, are, that are being implicated in the cause? EBV, HIV, eh, chronic viral infections, right? And increased fatigue may be a s symptom of hypocalcemia also rarely. Not, not usual, but it can occur, right? Children who have recurrent episodes of hypoglycemia, they can present with fatigue, right? It's chronic also proven renal. as a genetic cause is also proven as a chronic for chronic fatigue syndrome. There's also genetic etiology and, and the virus infection. Children with yeah. chronic renal disease is present with fatigue, right? Cardiac disorder, of course, no question at all, it does present with fatigue. Any child who has a chronic hypoxia, secondary to a pulmonary or a systemic disease can have fatigue. Right? What about tuberculosis? We have spoken about everything except our national common thing. You think this will fit in with the tuberculosis? Rashes. Rashes is unlikely, oral ulcers are unlikely, unlikely but easy fatigability, loss of weight. And the fever episodes, one has to think that in mind as well. Common things no are common. No history of any TB contact. There is no contact, okay. And lymphadenopathy is styled, okay, we will come to that on examination. Can tuberculosis not present with rash? And if it presents with rash, what rash can occur in tuberculosis? Erythema nodosum, notorious manifestation erythema nodosum. You can have various types of cutaneous tuberculosis. Only thing is, they are not manifestations, as Ravi said, they are not manifestations of systemic tuberculosis. Disseminate. They are isolated. Okay, erythema nodosum is... Uh, what is it? Erythema nodosum is the manifestation of uh, disseminated tuberculosis or primary tuberculosis? Primary, primary tuberculosis. It's a hypersensitive phenomenon where immediately following mantle conversion or tuberculin conversion, you get a manifestation in the form of a erythema nodosum. It can occur. Right? This fever was not associated with any dysuria, hematuria, headache, altered sensorium, seizures, jaundice, melina, hematemesis, bruising, 
ஒரு பார்லர் ஜாயின் பெயின் ஸ்டார்டட் அலாங் வித் சீவர் சப்சிக்வென்ட்லி இனிஷியலி இன் ஸ்மால் ஜாயின்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஹேண்ட் அண்ட் ஃபுட் அண்ட் கிராஜுவலி இன்வால்விங் த பைலேட்ரல் நீ ஜாயின்ஸ் அண்ட் லெஃப்ட் எல்போ ஜாயின் left domain was advised the parents have understood that this is a long term problem and it requires treatment I mean long term follow up and treatment run child has not attained uh, menarche so far however uh, the mother's age of attainment of menarche was 14 years now currently the child is ambulatory ஃபெப்ரைல் அம்பேட்டி அண்ட் ஃபெப்ரைல் any other history suggestive of uh, uh, rare things like reynard phenomenon or any nail involvement yes. alopecia all those are uh, part of the uh, generalized connective tissue symptoms history of alopecia was noticed uh, over the past 10 days sir okay but there is no patchy loss of hair that was noticed mm-hmm. and there is no history of any bluish discoloration when the child uh, keeps her hands in cold water okay in essentially the patchy loss happens first in the temporal areas temporal regions and then progress but it can be patchy also what are the any other cause of alopecia what are the cause any other cause of alopecia that you can think of hypothyroidism okay hypothyroidism is one mm-hmm. fungal fungal, fungal infections, infections vitamin deficiencies and any child on chemotherapy okay. then addition hmm. additions diabetes mellitus thyroid particularly okay. autoimmune yeah. thyroiditis autoimmune thyroid right these are the three important endocrine causes for uh, alopecia right and don't forget alopecia due to vitamin d hypocalcemic type 2 isn't it yes. the receptor defect one alpha hydroxylase yes uh, as uh, anything any chronic disease right she is receiving 978 kilocalories against the requirement of uh, 1970 calorie gap of 1000 uh, kilocalories protein 0.7 gram per kg per day against the requirement of 1.45 kilocalorie per kg per day per gram grams per day she is immunized up to 7 years as per the national immunization schedule in government setup there is no history of uh, similar illness in the family and uh, she belongs to lower middle class according to modified kuppu swami scale Okay. Uh, can you give a summary of uh, the history so far? <coughs> Vishnu Priya is a 11 year old female who is apparently well school going um, girl uh, till 4 months ago. Later subsequently had rash which was waxing and waning in course for the past 4 months associated with fever which was uh, recurrent for the past 4 months associated with joint pains which had a waxing and a waning course involving the small joints and also one large joint um, associated with uh, neck swellings with neck swellings and the um, oral ulcerations um associated with uh, significant poor oral intake disturbing her daily activities with associated with school absenteeism probably so, which system is involved with this history multi system involvement so one is the skin skin and the joints okay and lymph nodes and which are the systems involved in this cell musculoskeletal system sir why do you say musculoskeletal system is involved 
Can this be an endocrine cause for a weight loss in this child? What are the endocrine uh, conditions that cause weight loss? Hyperthyroidism. Hyperthyroidism. Yeah. <coughs> hyperthyroid. Okay. Do you think Addison. this is hyperthyroidism? What are the, okay, why is it not hyperthyroidism? Uh, there is no uh, um, diarrhea. There is a rash uh, which is not explained. No. Okay. There, no, there are no tremors. Okay. And... Uh, They will have palpitations, sir. Okay. And fever will not be waxing and waning. Uh, Usually, children with hyperthyroidism may do not present with fatigue. But rarely, they may present with hyperactivity. Hyperactivity rather than fatigue. Uh, they are restless and sleepless rather than fatigued or lethargic. So, that is against hyperthyroidism. And joint symptoms also are not explained by thyroid illness. Unless it is. Myopathy can... Uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Mixedema and myopathy can happen in Graves disease. Graves disease, one has to think about autoimmune condition which can cause muscle, uh, you know, weakness. Is the nervous system involved in this child? She is having sleep disturbance. No, is the nervous system involved in this child or not? Yes. Anybody in the audience, is the nervous system involved in this child or not? Why, why you say probably involved? Sleep disturbance could be due to chronic pain. The mm. child is having joint symptoms chronically. It could be the chronic joint pains. One has to ask why the sleep is disturbed. I have asked her whether she is awakening because of pain. She said no. If pain is not disturbing the sleep and fatigue is present, sleep is decreased, Definitely one has to think of a central involvement. Perhaps what other questions should you have asked to find out if there had been central involvement in this child? Any altered, uh, any altered uh, behavior, any abnormal movement? Abnormal behavior, okay. Any one. Abnormal Why movement? abnormal behavior? The lab mood fluctuations. Uh, yeah, you, of course, if you are going to think of a long-term disease with rash, definitely you are going to think of SLA and definitely psychosis and seizures are considered to be the most common manifestations. You have to inquire into what, are the, what else? Any, any abnormal movements, sir? Now, did you find out the ambulation of this child? See, yes, you said yes. joint pain and swelling. At no point at the time I heard you talking about how her ambulation had been for the last four months. Whenever she is having severe uh, joint pain, she has difficulty in walking, sir. Difficulty in walking? Pain. Is the difficulty in walking due to a neurological cause or a rheumatic cause? Because of pain, sir. Because of pain. pain. Uh, and tell the gate. Why not she be having an associated muscle weakness also, which could indicate there is associated you said fatigue is there. She, Could she have a muscle weakness in addition to joint involvement? So she is able to get up on her own from the bed. She is able to walk. What she other question you would have asked to find out if she had had any associated, say, myopathy? Is she able to brush her teeth, able to comb her hair? Anything, her else, anything else more important than the daily? Toilet, toilet. I think the most sensible question would have been, whether she is able to squat and if they have an Indian toilet, whether the child is able to squat and get up. That would have been very, very relevant. What okay. about the early morning stiffness? That is also one of the uh, signs of... There the is no uh, more joint stiffness. Okay. You know what is gelling? Gelling, G-E-L-L-I-N-G. Gelling is the hands and feet becoming stiff after sitting for a long time, especially after a car journey or in the classroom and they sit for a long time in the classroom, they find that they are not able to get up. That is called gelling, which characteristically is a feature in uh, SLE and other uh, rheumatic conditions. It's mentioned. Right. Uh, do you think renal system is involved in this child? There is no decreased uh, urine output, not involved, sir. Not there's no, involved. because there's no... Meaning the hematological system is involved in this side. Um, there's no... Hmm? There's fatigue ability, sir, but there's no issue of any failure, sir. Do you think the immune system is involved in this time? No, no recurrent infections noticed. Uh, I mean. 
fever itself mm. four months fever recurrent fever you said it can be can be infectious can be can be associated infection right these are the possibilities if with this with this history what do you think is can you said so many problems use what are the problem fever rash multi system involvement what do you think is the most probable diagnosis to the history looking at auto connective tissue disorders why do you say connective tissue disorder because it's having a multi system involvement waxing and waning uh, course sir and um, adolescent girl it's um, associated with fever rash and uh, joint pains so you think this is a connective tissue disorder any other possibility you thought of at this point of time me um, malignancy can be a possibility malignancy which malignancy where and why did you think of malignancy in this child um Mult- um, there is a generalized uh, lymph nodal swelling sir and uh, recurrent fever weight loss is histiocytosis possibility with that rash how do you differentiate a rash from histiocytosis with a rash from sle or other connective tissue disorder How many of you think it's just that it's possible in this time? You have uh, joint symptoms, fever, rash on the face. Other symptoms like uh, arthritis media, diabetes insipidus can sometimes be associated with hysteria cytosis. There is no polyuria, sir. There is no um, ear disorder. There is no polyuria. There is no polydipsia. Okay, which is seboria. Seboria in seboria. the scalp is very, very prominent that hysteria is not forthcoming. what are the malignancies which press, which are associated with rashes can you give examples other than histiocytosis rash and malignancy what are the possibilities since you raised the possibility of a malignant disease rash and malignancy can you try to connect the two I, um, acute myeloid leukemia acute myeloid leukemia presents with what fever fever Uh, generalized lymphadenopathy no oh, rash we are talking about rash and malignancy you are right in saying acute myeloid leukemia but i can you can anybody in the audience give the specific answer myeloid leukemia is notoriously prone to develop chloroma chloroma right chloromas are very characteristic of non lymphocytic leukemia they can present as greenish swelling right they can present in fact the important differences between a lymphocytic and a non lymphocytic leukemia in the clinical presentation are one superior mediastinal syndrome is very characteristic of a t cell lymphocytic leukemia the presence of a chloroma or presence of a gingival hypertrophy presence of a divc presence of proptosis favor the diagnosis clinically of a non lymphocytic leukemia for example in pro myelocytic leukemia you can have divc you can have gingival hypertrophy you can have proptosis due to retroorbital tumor in non lymphocytic leukemia or chloroma right any other malignancy in which rash is prominent what about lymphomas lymphomas hmm. hmm they can have cutaneous manifestations non heart skins lymphoma can present with cutaneous manifestation notoriously ecchymosis and purpura are very characteristic of any all isn't it ecchymosis purpura anything else any other kaposi huh? sarcoma basically in pediatric hiv is very very unusual unusual neuroblastoma neuroblastoma sometimes can have cutaneous secondary Right. Okay. Is there any other diagnosis other than malignancy you thought of in this set? Periodic fever syndrome. Periodic fever syndrome. Do you think this is periodic fever? Mm. <coughs> Can be one of the possibility because rash and uh, recurrent fever age age group. do the periodic fever present in an adolescent girl like this 
you just think of any other infection in this child tuberculosis tuberculosis is tuberculosis a possibility in this child yes sir um india being an endemic country and then uh, tuberculosis can present in any form um, child has been having uh, fever for quite some time and uh, poor weight gain oral so poor the parents give a history that this child has had fever initially and has then started on att elsewhere and this story is present what will be your diagnosis you get my point same story girl one month fever somebody has started att and the story of the rash photosensitivity what will be your diagnosis you should first think of a drug induced lupus drug induced lupus if you if somebody is receiving att and then later on develops either the initial tuberculosis diagnosis is wrong or you are having a child who has a drug induced lupus notoriously anti tuberculosis drugs pyrazinamide even inh can produce drug induced lupus also remember pyrazinamide can cause hyperuricemia which is a cause of joint symptoms and gout which is quite often missed unless we check the uric acid level any other infection you thought of chronic infection which has multi system manifestation the other than tuberculosis i think yeah. the absence of pulmonary manifestation the absence of cns manifestations rash as the primary symptom with photosensitive tuberculosis is extremely unlikely. unlikely unless there is a duo you can have a sli with tuberculosis and tuberculosis with sli both can exist together but that combination is unlikely if you make a diagnosis you are unlikely to be right right any other chronic infection lines disease brucellosis no 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 when you have somebody who has fever with rash for 3 months what ebv chronic ebv or cme infection notoriously common in immunocompromised children but can occur rarely in particularly when you have lymphadenopathy but arthritis is not common not prominent right so that is another possibility any other chronic infection when you have joint involvement when you have lymphoreticular involvement fever again india i am giving a clue what other infection you think of cousin of tuberculosis tuberculosis mimic brucellosis however uncommon it is it can present exactly like tuberculosis with non caseating granulomas with lymphadenopathy the thing is rash is unusual rash is unusual like in lyme disease what rash do you get what is it described as serpiginous erythema chronica migrans erythema migrans what what is the causative agent for lyme disease borrelia borrelia Can this be a drug fever? No, sir. That that cannot be. She has been hospitalized three times. Yes, sir. Which drugs cause this sort of fever, rash, lymphadenopathy? Commonest group of agents which cause fever, rash, lymphadenopathy, with photosensitivity, with or without arthritis. Um, fen fenytoin. Anti convulsants. Okay. Anti convulsants. Everything can occur. Dress. or uh, uh, a pseudo lymphoma syndrome can occur exactly the same way right in anti convulsant induced fever can happen right go ahead general exam can somebody get the patient general examination um, child was alert comfortably lying in supine position with uh, ivy line in c2 in the right wrist 
पंजों पर There is no pallor, no ictus, no clubbing. There is generalized lymphadenopathy. Lymph nodes involved are uh, cervical group of lymph nodes, anterior and posterior, multiple in number, and the largest being uh, 4 into 2 centimeters. Then axillary lymph nodes are also involved uh, bilaterally. The largest being uh, Four into one, four into two centimeters, and inguinal lymph nodes are also involved. The largest being three into one centimeters. The lymph nodes are firm, non-tender, mobile, non-matted, and skin over the lymph node is pinchable. Is it only cervical group of nodes are involved? Cervical, axillary, I and uh, inguinal lymph nodes. Can you describe the rash that she is having clinically? How will you describe the rash? So, malar rash, sir, erythematous. So, describe a malar rash. What is it typically called? What is a malar rash in But typically called? It? Butterfly. Butterfly rash. Why is it called a butterfly? Because distribution of describe describe the distribution. How will you describe it? Over the malar area. And uh, sparing of the nasolabial fold. Okay. Not involving the periorbital area. But it involves the bridge of the nose. Yes. Continuously, is a contiguous fashion. It involves the bridge of the nose. Sparing of the nasolabial folds. It's a fixed rash, macular with erythematous components. Okay. Yes. So that is what a butterfly rash is. And here is the bridge of nose involved. Not some is there some involvement is, is there yeah yes. but there is also involvement of peri uh, peri oral region also yes. then um, vitals hmm. heart rate is hundred per minute respiratory rate is thirty per minute maintaining saturation in room air BP is one ten by sixty nine. It comes under 50 between the 50th and the 90th centiles, according to the AAP charts. Head to toe examination. There is um, mild thinning of hair noticed on the posterior in the occipital region, but there is no patchy hair loss or alopecia. There is no um, congestion of the eyes or no corneal haziness. Mala rash is noted, and the Nasal, um, the septal mucosa is erythematous, and uh, palatal ulcer, tiny discrete ulcers are seen over the palate and also in the gingival aspect, and also oral thrush is Even there. The palatal ulcer is supposedly very specific for SLE. SLE, they describe the palatal ulcers very characteristic finding. And uh, is there any nail involvement? No nail. Why is it important? In now, uh, in psoriasis, nail involvement can be okay, seen. There can sir. be fitting of the nail, mm -hmm. which can be psoriasis. Okay. No. Any eye involvement? Have we mentioned about any? Yes, redness there is no the no redness of there's the no eyes, no corneal laziness. There is no scleritis or uveitis. Mm -hmm. Is the distribution only in the sun-exposed regions or covered areas also? In covered areas also, sir. Over the chest and the abdomen also, the rash is okay. predominantly seen. So that is difficult to explain. Characteristically, SLE is supposedly in sun-exposed areas. The papillospermous rash is noticed over the neck, behind the ears, and over the chest and the abdomen. And, uh, To date, she doesn't seem to have ulcers. What she has is only erythema of the soft palate. There is absolutely no. I can't make her. <coughs> Now let me see properly. The muscle groups is very important. That is part of pediatric gait 
arms legs and spine see that what is pgans it is uh, pediatric gait huh? how do you do it? can you do can you do pgans for her right now since ravi yes. asked you can you do pgans for her for yes. the sake of others first uh, we have to make the child stand before you do anything what do you do we have to take consent take consent one is not asky don't worry we have to take and you have to take consent you already taken consent for examination how do you do a p gans examination what's the first thing you do we have to undress her no anybody what's the first thing you do in p gans what's the first thing you ask three questions that is the first thing first thing you don't start doing anything first thing you ask what are the three questions that you ask anybody in the audience can help pain pain ask anything what are the three questions that you ask in p girls you ask three questions one is you can ask in telugu whether there is pain stiffness or swelling three symptoms related to three areas joints muscles and back that's the first question what is the second question anybody and if you read nelson i think second is are you able to dress yourself if it is an older child is there any difficulty in dressing up that's the second question what's the third question are you able to climb the stairs up and down can you ask these questions niku ikkada pattesna demana untunda neppa unda unda neppelle ee battlu esko galugutunava kuchu podukunna appudu podukon podukoni లేచినప్పుడు ఏదైనా నెప్ ఏమన్నా ఉందా పట్టేసినట్టు ఏమన్నా ఉంటుందా వాట్ ఇస్ ద సిగ్నిఫికెన్స్ ఆఫ్ దీస్ క్వశ్చన్ వై హ్యావ్ ది గివెన్ దీస్ క్వశ్చన్ ఎనిబడి ఇట్ ఇస్ జస్ట్ మీనింగ్ లెస్ వాట్ ఇస్ ద సిగ్నిఫికెన్స్ ఆఫ్ ద ఫస్ట్ క్వశ్చన్ ఫస్ట్ క్వశ్చన్ విల్ టెల్ యూ సి ఆఫ్టర్ ఆల్ ఇట్ ఇస్ ఎ బ్లైండ్ అప్రోచ్ టు సంబడి హూ సస్పెక్టెడ్ టు హ్యావ్ ఎ రోమటలాజికల్ డిజార్డర్ బై ఆస్కింగ్ క్వశ్చన్స్ whether there is pain stiffness or swelling in relation to muscle in relation to joint or back you are localizing the disease for example if the if the child says it is having pain over the muscle you are going to think of a myositis if the child says there is going to be pain in the back and stiffness in the back you are going to think of something like a spondylitis or a disc prolapse or if there is pain or stiffness related to joint you are going to think of a arthritis is very important very meaningful question second is what is the relationship between dressing and rheumatology mm. huh small joint and simple question by, by a, if a child is unable to dress himself or herself there may be a problem in the upper limb joints or in these days of tight jeans etc there may be a problem in the lower limbs is a child says i am i have difficulty in wearing my sweater the problem is in the upper limb the child says i have problem in putting on my trouser you know the problem is either in the back or in the no you can localize with these questions what is the third question climbing up and stairs which portion of the body you are assessing proximal Muscle. lower limb lower limb joint lower limb joint you know whether there is weakness as there is stiffness as there is pain you can make out with these question these are the screening questions first you ask then how do you do the gals what is gals what's the expansion for gals pediatric uh, gait arm legs and spine spine isn't it how do you examine that uh, no one said no one said first uh, how do you examine the gait of the child demonstrate for the sake of others here if it takes some time it's better this is very important for us to know
you made her walk then what do you do walk on the toes and walk on the heels okay right she able to do do you expect a 11 year old child to walk so slowly ask her to do it fast ah okay walk on the walk on the toes ah uh, fast 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 okay she is able to do them well right gate gate right then what next arms girls you know arms how do you examine the arms uh, sri priya examine the arms is it normal is it normal how many of you think that this is normal how many of you think this is normal see priya you wouldn't you say extend your yeah and you are straight out stretching like a dancer almost right right, right. <laughs> and you think hers is normal then stretch it nicely man yeah anything abnormal as you are doing it what are you observing see as you do it you observe also what what do you observe see there are see, of course you find that the muscles in both the forearms are wasted and look at the wrist is the left wrist normal you f- uh, she is not able to, only after suggesting she is able to stretch she is able to do it there appears to be some swelling of the left wrist and she appears to keep the left wrist slightly flex and as you are observing you find that there is minimal fullness of the proximal ip joint what next what do you do after asking her to do no 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 ask her to Yeah. We are examining the radial nerve and wrist joints and the forearm, isn't it? Yeah. What next? Arms. Ah. Then ask her to touch the little finger, approximate the uh, little finger with the thumb. Then every finger, examining the small joints. What next? No, 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 no. Before that, before that. see the wrist and also metacarpal phalangeal joints then what do you do then what do you do say namaskar no 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 that's not the relax 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 okay so because of the line she is not line, able to not able to do it namaskar then then turn it down then what the arms is not till over stretching up lifting and touching the wall lifting uh, trying to touch the roof and and uh, look up you are extend, you are examining the spine also cervical spine also so arms is over isn't it then one more arms is still not over you have to you have to bring the hands to the back of the neck arms over isn't it arms then p gals isn't it legs can ask her to stand up and touch the toes legs what do you do make her lie down do 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 can do it here what do you do in the legs anybody what do you do in the legs you you feel for crepitus in the knee for effusion right and see the flexion of the knee joint then flexion of the hip to 90 degree and internal rotation of the hip that's it in 3 minutes what did you find in her her pigals is normal
there is you have made out that there is some local problem in the metacarpophalangeal joint and probably in the left wrist right wrist you are not able to examine right the rest the rest of the joints appear to be normal okay the very purpose of pgals is to identify which area of the musculoskeletal system is involved for you to perform a focused joint and rheumatological examination and that should be completed as fast as possible right so typically in sle what the joints do you expect to be involved the large joints or small joints which small joints um hand joints hand and um, foot joints or small joints metacarpophalangeal joints joint. and the first proximal interphalangeal joints and other large joints in uh, rheumatoid arthritis what joint is expected to be involved both uh, small and uh, large joints are involved okay so that is important which joints are involved what is the distribution that also gives you an idea about what could the diagnosis be in which disease characteristically there is involvement of in the distal ip joints so psoriatic arthritis anthropometry uh, weight is 25.1 kg it is less than the fifth centile um, height is 140 cm it is between the 25th to 50th centile according to the cdc chart and uh, bmi is uh, 12.8 less than the fifth centile and uh, tanner staging is uh, stage 2 Stage mm -hmm. two is for what? As uh, describe the components of uh, different standard stage. Uh, stage one, there is a. Uh, I mean, um, the, just there is enlargement of the areolar tissue, and uh, there is no hyperpigmentation, no pubic hair, no axillary hair. And uh, stage two only there is a breast bud, no no axillary or uh, pubic hair. and uh, it's better to have stages for each component breast axillary and pubic hair when you say read any standard textbooks you will see the different stages of each component so here the breast stage 2 axillary hair stage 1 and the pubic hair stage pubic 1 remember there is no stage 0 it starts with the uh, stage 1 okay so is that normal for this child how old is the child now 11 years sir 11 years okay so it is within the normal developmental pattern okay then uh, Sir, uh, systemic examination. What is the primary symptoms? You said some swellings in the neck. Yes, you may not describe. I describe it, sir. I'll repeat it again. At systemic examination or general examination? In general examination, I have given detailed uh, description of lymph nodes. No, which are the lymph nodes which are involved? Um, in the cervical group of lymph nodes are involved. Uh, cervical axillary and uh, inguinal lymph nodes are involved in cervical both the anterior and the posterior group are involved and uh, there are three to four in number on either side and each um, the swelling the largest of the cervical lymph node are 3 uh, to 2 cm in the posterior uh, cervical region of the right side Um, and also the submental and the submandibular lymph nodes are also involved they are from non tender mobile non matted and skin of the lymph node is pinchable and uh, in the axillary lymph node also bilaterally axillary nodes are involved and the um, largest being on the right axilla form which is uh, 4 into 2 cm inguinal bilaterally In one on the left side and one on the right side, the large oval in shape, and the largest being three into one centimeter. Yeah, you said the anterior and posterior cervical nodes are palpable. Yes. Which node? Which group of lymph nodes, if palpable, is sig more significant? Um, anterior, sir, submandibular. Why? Why anterior is more significant than posterior? Hmm. Anybody? Why anterior is more significant? 
posterior are normally present and enlarged in the age group of 4 to 8 years due to the frequency of recurrent uh, infections infection. occurring in normal children on the other hand the anterior glands are likely to be significant whether it is an acute infection or a chronic infection or a malignancy anterior is more important than posterior similarly supraclavicular is more important than other group of lymph nodes right commonly posterior occipital posterior cervical nodes may normally be present in children belonging to the age of 4 to 8 but not anterior group of lymph nodes right they are significant they are more significant than the posterior as a rule Systemic examinations, so we'll just say the positive uh, findings. Abdomen, abdomen wise, abdomen is soft, um, there's no abdominal distension, and uh, spleen is uh, one centimeter palpable below the left coastal margin towards the splenic axis and uh, liver is palpable 1 cm below the right coastal margin and the liver span is 9 cm which is appropriate for age. Mm. Respiratory wise, a bilateral air entry is good, um, chest is clear, no adventitious sounds, cardiovascular wise uh, Peripheral pulses are... No, and no, test examination, sorry, what, what did you expect to find when you say normal? Is there anything that you expected to find in this time? Um, tachypnea, okay. um, respiratory distress <coughs> because of um, serositis. Okay, serositis. So, pan serositis can happen, you can have pleural effusion, pericardial effusion, arthritis. So, percussion note is not dull, is normal on both sides. Yes, sir. So, okay. I focus. Is there any plural uh, rub or a pericardial rub? No, sir. You said liver is palpable one centimeter below the costal margin. Where? Anteraxial line, posteraxial line, midaxial line, midclavicular line. Midclavicular line. Midclavicular line. What about the big Is it below the xiphoid? Is it palpable? I didn't. Huh? I didn't. Do you think it's important to know whether the liver is palpable in the epigastric region? And if so, why? To rule out any chronic uh, liver disease, yeah, if the left lobe is palpable or mention, not. mention, make it a point. It's not enough if you simply say one centimeter below the right cost margin. You must say the exact place where you found that one centimeter below. And you must say whether the left lobe is palpable or not. Because it could to anybody, if the left lobe is palpable and firm, it could become an important physical finding indicating that there is chronic Liver. Pathology in the liver. Right? Though you said span is normal, suppose you had found a firm liver, particularly in the epigastric region, left lobe being palpable, it would become very, very important. And again, as uh, what, like what Ravi mentioned, you should mention that you look for signs of ascites. They are not there. And okay. you should always, you know, anything relevant to the disease or the diagnosis, you must mention without the examiner or anybody asking you. Make it a habit. Okay. And, um, CNS wise, uh, tone is uh, no, tone is normal. The upper and the lower limbs both, and uh, reflexes are L stable. No abnormal movements have been noted. You think you found abnormal? No, That's CNS fine. examination is normal. Sum up your case and give a. Diagnosis and differential diagnosis. Uh, Vishnupiya is a 11 year old uh, female who was uh, apparently well till 4 months back. Later uh, had fever with uh, with recurrent fever since 4 months and uh, rash which is waxing and waning. Differential systemic onset here. So uh, this could be a polyarticular type of a Juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, rheumatoid idiopathic arthritis. And any other condition in the same group? Mm. Dermatomyositis. 
ओके जूनल डर्मेटोमायोसाइटिस ओके एंड सोरायटिक आर्थराइटिस बट देयर इज नो सोरायटिक लीशन नेल इज नॉट इन्वॉल्व वैस्कुलेटिक लीशन बट द टिप द रैश इज नॉट टिपिकल ऑफ वैस्कुलेटिक डिसऑर्डर्स ओके fine any other differential diagnosis you want to offer rheumatic fever okay it's not a classical mm-hmm. rheumatic fever uh, there are other lot of other mm-hmm. features which are against it rheumatic fever and the lyme disease periodic fever we already spoke mm-hmm. about all that inflammatory bowel disease crohn's and ulcerative colitis manifesting with mucocutaneous involvement so all those come under differential diagnosis and apart from the musculoskeletal system any other like malignancy acquired, um, acquired immunodeficiency okay. syndrome yeah and i think that all things we already covered like any malignancy we already covered possibility of that and possibility of tuberculosis we already mentioned about that okay um and the chronic illnesses like brucellosis all those things okay so how will you investigate this child mm. ஒரு <laughs> 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 total card wbc count <laughs> hemoglobin uh, differential count differential count uh, hemoglobin um platelets peripheral smear use the use the mic normal or abnormal smear essentially normal essentially normal mm-hmm. peripheral smear oh no blast in the smear right mm-hmm. esr crp no what is the esr 88 sir 88 crp 0.1 0.1 urine routine urine routine is normal but urine dipstick is also normal no protein um so urea creatinine correct liver function test then uh, chest x ray ha huh? oh, take a man take an outside i think outside taken is uh, normal normal okay. um man 2 this is done optical examination optical examination is normal mark you have tried to see tomorrow use the mic bro optical you have tried to see tomorrow otherwise is normal essentially normal uh, ultrasound ultrasound is uh, showing uh, mild hepatosplenomegaly rest is normal so why do you need ultrasound you need ultrasound uh-huh. abdomen here to look for the kidneys any altered uh, i mean any involvement But urine microscopy is uh, negative urine uh, there is no uh, rbc no hematuria uh-huh. yeah. liver involvement how how are you going to make out liver involvement when the liver is just one centimeter really the only thing which can be missed clinically which can be made out by ultrasound is what lymph nodes in the retroperitoneal region to one one more aside is minimal free fluid might might not be detectable with the best of clinical examination which may be picked which could give you a clue that there is polycirrhosis nodes can give you a clue whether there is tuberculosis or lymphoma or even a connective tissue disease these two finding could be very very useful of course as ravi said urine is normal urea creatinine is normal the very unlikely you are going to pick up findings in the kidneys right any specific investigations you want to do uh, ana ana and uh, dsd dna double stranded dna double stranded dna okay anti dsd dna and uh, anti nuclear antibody okay mm. suppose the anti nuclear antibody in this cell comes as positive what do you do negative what do you do how will you interpret 
the report comes report has come ma huh? not yet come suppose the report comes as positive or negative how is it going to change your approach to the patient if it is a uh, positive it is definitely a connective tissue disorder definitely how many of you agree in the audience yeah 20% of normal individuals can have ana positivity right majority of those with lupus erythematosus have positivity and ana is a significance in rheumatology for what suppose you diagnose a rheumatological disorder and the child is ana positive ana negative what is the what is the most important significance to you a child who has ana positivity in a rheumatological disorder is prone for uveitis and needs more frequent referrals to ophthalmologist that's what matters to you but just because ana is negative or positive you are not going to rule in or rule out your rheumatological disorder right this is a highly non specific affair what about anti ds dna that is specific for uh... suppose it comes as negative or positive how are you going to react if it is positive uh, salt of sle more specific yeah it's confirmatory isn't it if it is positive can it be negative in sle when when minority of sle may have anti ds dna particularly when the disease is quiescent for example the amount of positivity of dna ds dna may correlate with the severity of the disease and it may vary and it need not be positive in 100 percent i don't know the percentage if, if you have read theory uh, perhaps you can say what percentage usually ds dna is positive i think is around 95 percent i don't remember the percentage majority will have ds dna positivity right what else will you do bone marrow why should you do bone marrow for this um, we are about to rule out any malignancy and we are uh, also the child may require steroids sir before suppose ana comes as positive with these reports with this clinical picture will you definitely do a bone marrow at all is an invasive procedure we she okay. says there is no pancytopenia can anybody answer this question i think uh, one clue that this is not malignancy so far with the reports what pratima is giving is a negative crp right a negative crp in a child who appears to have a multi system disorder probably a rheumatological disorder that too with a rash like this is almost pathognomonic of sle can anybody tell me why crp is negative in uh, sle why is it negative notoriously negative in fact crp is notoriously negative in sle and if the crp is raised it indicates a high probability of coexistent or comorbid infection in any child with sle rarely in children who have sle and who have polycirrhosis they may have mildly elevated crp the interestingly in literature what is said is that many of these children have a genetic predisposition to sle and many of them do not produce c reactive protein at all in fact the the inability to produce c reactive protein is also implicated in the pathogenesis they say there is if there is not enough c reactive protein in the body it leads to less of apoptosis so much so lot of dirty material from the nucleus of various cells circulates in the serum and they increase the production of antibodies and auto antigenicity that is one of the theories and last there are even animal studies which have shown if you give crp to mice with uh, sle i believe the presence of anti phospholipid antibody indicate that this child is at high risk of thrombotic, thrombotic complications it is one of the indications for considering hydroxychloroquine an antiplatelet 
therapy in this child therapy in this child that's important perhaps c3 may be useful in the sense it can indicate hypo complement a complement in here indicating the possibility of a uh, nephrite thyroid function is required an echo to look for any pericarditis or myocardial dysfunction x ray of course this will complete the work up so echo may show this varicose endocarditis which is called lipid sac uh, endocarditis which is a rare finding the only thing i want to mention other thing parotitis apparently is one of the features in sle so whenever a child comes with uh, isolated parotitis one has to think about early manifestation of sle or a jogren syndrome in which case the ssa ssb antibodies may be present can anybody tell me what are the differences in the lupus in children when compared to adults ultimately it looks like lupus we are waiting for confirmation is it right pratima we don't have the test yet dna is not there anti dsd dna and uh, we are just waiting she is quite stable she doesn't seem to have renal involvement or cardiac involvement or pulmonary involvement as of now right eyes are normal right what's the, what are the differences between lupus in children and lupus in adults sasilata this discoid uh, uh, lesions are I mean, discoid lupus erythematosus is more common in adults than in pediatric age group and um, nephritis is more um, um frequently seen in uh, children anybody in fact fever fatigue arthritis arthralgia and skin manifestations are more common in pediatric lupus than in adult lupus otherwise it's the same it's the same okay. majority of lupus in pediatrics presents as fever when compared to other manifestations in adults adults can present as anything But in children invariably lupus presents with fever that is one difference mentioned in books fever fatigue arthritis arthralgia and skin manifestations are specifically mentioned as more common in pediatric lupus otherwise it's the same Okay. Yes. Questions, sir? Yeah. There anything? Any any questions to Ravi or uh, Sri Lata or to me <coughs> from the audience? This looks like a classic uh, uh, presentation of lupus. So we have to do echo, uh, even though the child is not symptomatic, sir. Ah. Uh, as a baseline uh, baseline can, baseline, baseline. <coughs> because more, uh, yeah. the presence of polycystitis will make you treat the child more aggressively and for prognosis it could be useful so no suddenly said tomorrow suddenly child comes with uh, some cardiac problem it can happen this is a very notorious disease now frequently do we monitor the child for renal complications i don't know all that i don't know the remedies so urine routine has to be uh, has to be done once every three monthly um uh, i don't think again uh, there's no recommendation